Hey everybody, welcome back to TingleCon 2021. And we have another great panel of talented ASMRs. Today we're gonna to be talking about uh, mental health and ASMR. And we have on our panel, Katie ASMR, Island Lucia ASMR, Luna Bloom, Beard and Bearded Audio ASMR. Thank you all so much for joining us. We truly appreciate it. Um, you know, so I want to be respectful of everyone's time here. You know, we have so many things uh, just jam-packed for this event. Why don't we go ahead and just dive into this? Because again, it is a very dense topic. Um, why don't we start off with this first question that I've been asking all the other uh, panels? Because I, it is TingleCon again. And we, you know, we want to focus on the sense of community and mutual respect and positivity. So maybe you could tell us some of your favorite hey, some artists, some you think are underrated, just maybe some people you, you really enjoy. Let's start with that. I'll kick us off. Sure, why not? Um, I think as far as favorites go, uh, I think actually Rapunzel is, if if I look at like a playlist that I've built, it's like a bunch of ASM artists and Rapunzel 12 times. Um, I, I just really like ear cleaning stuff um, and she's really, really good at that. Um, so Rapunzel is definitely probably my favorite, uh, as far as ASM artists that I think are underrated or that you should all go subscribe to now, uh, I think Scottish undertones previously Muzz, um, is great. I love his voice and his accent. Um, I love lady ASMR, uh, previously, I think attack ASMR. Um, she is hysterical. Like I think one of the funniest people in the community. Um, and then finally, oopsie Daisy. Um, I think deserves a million subscribers and more um for mine uh i know underrated right off the top of my head someone comes up and it's asmr quiche uh my entire thing right now and for the last few months has been like fast and aggressive asmr uh for a while i had tingle immunity entirely and then I found fast and aggressive ASMR and became obsessed. And her stuff, she doesn't even whisper. She just hangs out and talks to you and everything's like this, 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 this. It's so fast and so chaotic and out there. And just whatever pops into her head, she does it. And I think her channel, oh my God, so many people need to check out her channel. I think she's still under 10K and it is such a hidden gem of a channel. Uh, and so she's one of my favorites. ASMR Eliza is another favorite and was honestly one of my inspirations to start my channel. Incredible, incredible channel. Well, for me, um, maybe I will have to say some Spanish speaking channel. One of my favorites right now, right now is um, Luciernaga ASMR. Actually, she does mostly self-spoken, which I don't usually listen, but again, I was with some immunity and I started listening to her in soft spoken and it changed my my perspective of soft spoken. And also maybe one of the big names, but Grace B for me, it's been a salvation, to be honest. She's so relaxed and so kind and you can feel the kindness behind the camera, you know, and for me, it's really, really special. I was actually gonna say Grace V <laughs> is like my favorite is at the moment. Um, yeah, because it, she just makes you feel like you're just hanging out. Like I feel like she's my sister or like my best friend, uh, something like that. When you put put it on, it just you can you can relax. Um, and her sister Mads ASMR as well. Uh, and underrated. I don't know. I've been watching a lot of um, Whispers of the Wolf ASMR lately. Um, she does a lot of Reiki videos. And I find I find her vibe just really, again, like, it feels really genuine. I feel like I'm almost there in the room with her. Just a really caring um, vibe that makes you feel very safe and looked after, which is my kind of go-to. I'm always looking for just some <laughs> a virtual hug <laughs> video. <laughs> So, yeah. Fantastic. Why don't we jump into just one other basic ASMR question I'd just like to ask, um, which is what was your first ASMR experience and how did you get into creating a channel? Oh, I remember um, 
the well, I remember the first one that I can actually recall what happened. I knew that I had gotten ASMR prior to this because as it was happening, I was like, oh, the thing is happening. But um, I was like six years old. I was in summer school as I had just moved to America and I needed to learn English. And I was in an English class being taught a language I don't even, I didn't even understand. And I now can sort of process this experience and like translate it all. But at the time, um, I really needed help with my, my work and I needed to spell cat. I remember I needed to spell the word cat and I asked my teacher to come over and I was like, can you help me spell this? And she just like leans over me and she was like, C A T. And I was like, Oh, (laughs) it was like such an incredible experience. And that is the first instance of ASMR that I can remember. But I remember thinking that it wasn't the first, I knew it wasn't the first. For me, I think it's my first experience with ASMR, not actually knowing that it was ASMR. My father used to play this game with me and my and my sister, um, that it was like eating your ears. Actually, that now it's so mainstream on the ASMR community, but at the time it was like my father doing this sounds like, okay, I'm going to put salt in your ear. And it was doing all these crazy sounds and touching my ear. And for me, it was the way to go to sleep. So for sure, that was my first ASMR experience, but it was since I was a baby perhaps. So it's awesome. I think uh, for me, I know I experienced it as a kid, but there's no like, I can't, it's not, like haircuts were, were very, very common uh, for me. And, um, and as an adult though, I would say, I think I finally started to realize what it was um, when I would get, I do a lot of sound design. And so I, I have a ton of sound effects and I, I tend to download sound effects and buy sound effects packs and all that sort of stuff. And anytime I do, I go through like almost every single sound and there could be like hundreds that I get in a pack. And most of them are in stereo or binaural. And I'll just sit there and I'm like, oh, that's so nice. Oh, that's so, and it could be like a sword or like a gunshot and it's not relaxing at all, but like, it's just going through every single sound one after the next. And it's just like, this is nice. Um, and I think it was probably a couple of years later, I discovered what ASMR was. And I was like, Oh, that's, I was doing that to myself. Um, <laughs> I don't really know what, like from real life, what my first ASMR experience was. <laughs> Maybe, I mean, when I was little, sometimes my mom would like kind of like trace my back to help me fall asleep or if I didn't feel well or something. Um, but I always just liked cozy things. Like if you, we would like make a pillow fort or something, just this feeling of like hiding somewhere, like whispering, like if you play hide and seek and you're just hiding there with your friend, like, or at sleepovers when you'd be trying to not wake up your parents. <laughs> I love this kind of atmosphere. Um, But I remember my first kind of ASMR video experience more strongly because I I used to have panic attacks quite bad when I was um, kind of late teens. I remember I I would usually just have to wait them out. Like I would just be like, oh God, I I just need to wait a while. Um, Nothing really helped, but I was searching something like, um, helped me calm down from a panic attack and I found this ASMR video and it was um, this person called The Water Whispers and she's just like did this role play like she's coming beside your bed as if she's kind of just your friend and she was just really softly speaking and talking you through how to calm down um, as if she's there with you comforting you and it actually worked like I calmed down and I, I was like what the hell, how did this, <laughs> this actually worked? And from then I just got hooked. I started listening to her videos like all the time, all the time. Yeah. So I think that that's actually a good segue. I was going to ask sort of a question about your channel because I wanted you guys to have a chance to talk about that, but maybe that we'll throw to them at the end um, in the audience section. Why don't we go and just jump into this next segment here, which is related to what you just said. I mean, you talk. You talked about panic attacks and how ASMR was really a way for you to help um, calm down and things. What would you say to people? Well, first of all, what is mental health for you? And secondly, 
Um, what might you say to people who would say BASMR is just some shallow thing, uh, just tapping, you know, something like that? What, what might you say to them? I think in regards to um, ASMR being shallow or just some tapping, uh, I just say, let's entertain the idea that that's all it is. If you like it, you like it. And <laughs> we don't have to like, it doesn't have to be anything. If it's enjoyable, if it's fun, if people like it, then what's the harm? <laughs> it's just good fun. Yeah, I, I agree with that completely. Um, if if somebody says that uh, ASMR in whatever form they watch is comforting to them, cool. Like leave them alone. Like why would you why would you pick on them for that? Like I, I admit ASMR is weird to people who see it for the first time or uh, don't know what it is or uh, just don't enjoy it it it's inherently kind of odd um but just give us our corner of the internet please and leave us alone i completely agree and i think that maybe it's shallow for some and that's okay and that's fun and there's a lot of shallow content that belongs on the internet and entertain people and only the entertainment it's already healing in a way and there's also a lot of people for what ASMR it's been kind of a salvation an escape or a safe place, even a safe community to be. So I think it can be both and it's non-exclusive, you know, and that's what actually ASMR is for me. It's not always for relaxing or coming a panic attack. Sometimes I use it even for work. So I think it has its space and also there's such an amount, a large amount of creators that you can find anything. I always say that if you don't like ASMR, maybe you didn't or find your creator, the people that that's that ASMR that will be either entertaining or calming and relaxing for you. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I, I, I feel like to say ASMR is any one thing is kind of like saying music is one thing because like, ASMR can be entertaining, funny, or it could, or it can like really touch your heart. And in the same way as like, I feel like music for a lot of people have maybe like got them through really tough times because they connect to that song and it makes them feel not alone. And it kind of like gives them spirit and life. I think ASMR can, can be the same, but it can also be like, sometimes you just really like a good song. It's you want to put it on because it sounds nice. So it's like, I don't know. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think it's really important for people to hear that um, because, you know, I think that that's one of the things that, you know, is in the community, you know, just a, a hot issue right now um, because, you know, there are um, certain t styles and things like that that maybe feel people feel detract from or it gets trolled on the Internet, of course. Um, but let's jump into this next thing, because I think it is so relevant to the time we're living in and it is very connected to mental health. Um, have you found that um, COVID or coronavirus has maybe changed the way that you're interacting with ASMR just during this period? Have you found um, it's changed just your relationship with ASMR in general? I'll go quick and just say no. <laughs> For me, it hasn't. Um, I, I tend to, uh, I, I think a big part of that is uh, just my lifestyle. Like I'm married. I have a lot of kids. I really only listen at night or when I'm like working uh, and I, it's some boring number crunching or something. And I, I just need something playing in the background. Uh, and that didn't really change for me much. For me, actually, for, oh, sorry. oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, for me, actually, it did change because um i live in spain my whole family lives back in argentina my friends everyone so i i, I wasn't able to fly there and to see them I, I got a ticket everything and sometimes i don't know doing a phone call with friends again getting a bunch of people in a in a same even video call it looks impossible with the crazy lives we we live and ASMR has been such a company. And again, maybe some of the creators actually, at least for me, helped me go through this. I, I lost people and it was really a really hard time. And I, I don't know. I don't know if I was going to be able to go through it, through it without the help of all these ASMR create, creators that I will be forever grateful, especially in this time. 
That's really beautiful. Um, I think for, for me, it has to do with the creators that came about during 2020 and everything that happened. Um, a lot of new creators came out, I guess, because people were staying home and they're like, I like ASMR, I might as well try it out. And some of those creators were the ones that inspired me to start my channel. So I think that it sort of had like a domino effect and that's how it affected me personally. Yeah. Um, well, it's interesting because for me, a big part of why I got into ASMR, like other than like kind of anxiety stuff, it was I found it during a time in my life when I felt very lonely and kind of isolated from just people because I was going through a big transition. Anyway, so for me, a big part was about loneliness and kind of um, the comfort of feeling like you're not alone because you have a when when you have a, the video and um <laughs> I don't know so it kind of all this COVID was like a new, another time of many many people who maybe di didn't even experience it before feeling that sense of isolation um but I think a lot of people who turned to ASMR in the way that I did kind of were isolated before COVID anyway in at least mentally um so I, I guess a huge part of it for me has been this sense of coming together. And like a, a big part I didn't expect was meeting other ASMR artists and making friends and just like the sense of community in general. So being able to chat to your community in premieres and like live and you get to know people and like my community, we have a, a little discord and just people being able to share and chat every day or just, um, share when they're going through a hard time and just that that feeling that other people are also having a similar experience I think that's been huge uh for me so COVID kind of overlapped in that in a lot of ways fantastic um let's actually I think that's gonna be, everyone's gonna have really unique experiences there because uh, obviously certain places close down more than others um but um like where I'm in Florida where there is no closing um but Anyway, I digress. Um, so let's jump into this mental health component here because that's obviously what we're here to talk about today. Um, and I think that's a good a good segue into that. But so how how does ASMR affect your mental health? I mean, just because we're we're here to talk about experiences and just have a conversation. I mean, just tell us how has it affected you personally? Um, do you do you use ASMR to try to feel better, or you know, explain more of that for us? Uh, ASMR has been a godsend to my anxiety. Uh, I discovered it. I discovered ASMR videos in 2013 and I was going through an extreme amount of anxiety and I didn't really understand my anxiety at the time. And I would wake up in, in a panic and I would just immediately put on ASMR videos to just start my day and to end my day. Then it became a thing at work if I was anxious and, channels like Grace V, for example, where I just, anytime I'm anxious, I put on her videos and I'm like, let's hang out bestie. I need to calm down. And it's incredible. It has definitely made a huge difference. For me, it has been the same. It, it's been almost lifesaver for me, actually. I, I suffered a lot of, again, depression, anxiety, and insomnia, which insomnia affects everything in your life. When you lack sleep, you cannot function properly. And for me, actually, ASMR started, when I discovered the videos, I started using it to be able to sleep, and it helped me like wonders. And now it's part of my day-to-day -day in the sense like I wake up, and I make some coffee and I put an ASMR video and start working. And if I feel him sad, I put one video that I know it's going to bring me some comfort. And again, maybe uh, an ASMR channel that I, I wasn't able to, to name before, but it's Somni Rosé ASMR. She also, it's been such, such help for me with insomnia for sure and anxiety it'll help a lot at, at least for myself um for me i don't struggle with anxiety but i get depression pretty bad um and it kind of 
it's not really a sad depression. It's more like I'm a piece of trash and nobody loves me. Um, and, uh, when it rears its head, it's, it's, it gets kind of nasty. Um, and for me, I don't turn to ASMR videos really for comfort. Um, there is one in particular that I'll mention, which is, uh, Atlas ASMR, uh, about a year ago had one that was just called you've got this with tippy tappy and sign. And I've watched that one a lot. I've cried to that video. It has affected me a lot. Um, and, uh, just talking about it right now is making me tear up. Um, but there are select videos like that, especially when it's like men, that's a big thing for me is, uh, when, when I've got dudes that are telling me it's going to be okay. Uh, it's, it's, it helps me a lot. Um, but for me, I turned to creation, um, and to be able to focus on just creating ASMR, uh, I tend, I turn to humor a lot. Uh, and so I'm one of those people who's like depressed and I, I like to make people laugh. Um, and so you'll find a lot of my videos. I try to be funny. Um, there are some that are on the more serious side of things, but I, I find being able to take my mind off of things and sit down and focus. And then when somebody can turn around and tell me like, Hey, this helped me. It's like, sweet. Like that makes my day. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah, I f for me, like, like I said before, like a big part of my thing was loneliness. And then with that came kind of like depression and like anxiety. And I dealt a lot with social anxiety when I was um, younger. So even though I would crave like a connection, I found you know, situations very tr triggering sometimes. So it kind of is well kind of could be that middle balance where I feel connected, but I'm not like <laughs> freaking out. Um, even though I, I, I feel really lucky to have come a long way since then. Um, yeah, I, rem I remember at one point when I, I, um, I used to watch Karuna Satori's channel, like basically every single day she was my main <laughs> channel and I would just she would post every day at one point um and I, I remember just knowing I could just put that video on for 20 minutes and it's kind of like I could just breathe like I could just I can't even explain it. it's just like everything in my brain would just settle and I'd be like I can and then I it would make me feel like I can get through what I'm going to get through. And I think a big part of that is feeling kind of seen or validated because even though the artist cannot actually see you, the thing I love about Karuna is she somehow like kind of breaks through that wall and she would say things like, look, I know I'm making a video, you're behind the camera, but we all go through these things and this and that is valid. And like, if you're feeling like this, so you kind of just, <laughs> it helped me to feel like I'm not crazy that like I'm human and we all actually much more of us than we think have these kind of struggles. Um, but yeah, uh, what was, I was going to say one thing I forgot. <laughs> I don't know, but, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. That was really interesting. And I guess, um, cause I do think there's a big distinction between, um, you know, you're as a fan and as a creator, I think, um, bearded audio brought up that point. Um, and I do want to touch on that, um, actually a little bit. So, um, do you find that, um, or what's really been your relationship with your own fans of your own channel? Um, like, do you find that with regards to mental health, do you find them, that your listeners are coming into you um, for that kind of reason? Or are they coming there for the purely artistic um, appreciation? Um, do you find yourself discuss discussing these kind of issues with your with your uh, audience? I'll go first because mine might be short. I, I I'm by far the smallest channel in all of TingleCon. <laughs> and so like, I don't have a ton of people uh, that are coming to me and, and, and there's not like a, a theme really of, of comments. Um, usually that it's like, Hey, this is funny, which makes me go. Yeah. I'm funny. Um, and, and occasionally there is, you know, the, the somebody saying that they've helped me or like, man, these sounds are really nice. And, and just hearing that like makes me happy. Um, so I think it is, it's definitely the serotonin thing. It's the same thing as getting likes on Instagram. Um, so, so that's, definitely a nice part, but, uh, I do have a, a handful of people who, uh, are 
constantly the ones who are, are commenting and it's sort of building that community with them. Um, and that's been super cool. I think that's one of the most beautiful things about the ASMR community is that, of course, there's a group of people that will come for the entertainment and that's awesome. But there's also like this group of people that I'm sure we all know that they are always there. They're always commenting. And I don't know, at least for myself, I, I try to not only answer to at least the most amount of comments that I can, but all the DMs on Instagram and I being able to to hear their stories and their struggles again is this sense of not being alone and maybe I'm not that crazy. Maybe we are all humans struggling in this life and that we're living. And I think that's very special. And I'm, I'm, I'm maybe part of other communities, but I think that the bond that it's between ASMR creators and ASMR people that actually listen. And when you're a creator, actually you're in both sides because you create ASMR, but of most of us or all of us, we consume ASMR. And you also have that thing that other people has with you, that you calm them and you help them. You have that with other people. And that sense of like completing a circle that I think it's really special. Yeah, I actually that's that's the really beautiful part that when when you have friend, like creator friends that we you watch each other, so it's like this mutual kind of <laughs> actually rem reminded me what I was forgot to say the last time because I wanted to say that um, I just really remember watching this video from Slight Sounds um, like ages ago before I even made my channel, and it was called "You Are Not Alone," and um, she she was just talking really real like in a really real way in the video and they 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 started crying in the video actually and i remember i started crying too and it was so so powerful but it's it's crazy how then later on you you make a channel and you end up actually talking to those people and getting to know people who you just saw on the screen like before um but for this question <laughs> for me um yeah i actually get a lot of people talking in comments and DMs about mental health. And sometimes it, it's very emotional when someone says, hey, like you helped me with, like some people suffer from PTSD or depression, anxiety, and people say, hey, you helped me to like, just calm down or get to sleep. Um, and I, a powerful thing for me was, cause I, I have a Patreon and we have like a Discord server. So inside the, our discord we have a little page which is called the support tent so it's kind of a dedicated area where people can offload or just share if they're going through something and it's just been really beautiful to me to watch how everyone supports each other like i will maybe not be able to see the chat for a day or two but then i'll see everyone's been jumping in and kind of just sharing and being there for each other and sending hugs and um yeah, seeing that kind of develop over time is is really special and like really, really rewarding. Um, and sometimes they've been there for me too. Like I've had my turn to in that chat be like, hey, I had a rough couple of days and they come in and say, say things. So, so <laughs> that's been really cool. Yeah, I think it's really, it's really rewarding to see, to know that you've given people that feeling that you've gotten from ASM artists when they've helped you with depression or anxiety or something. And I think something that stuck out for me was the other day, I just started a TikTok and I'm just like, I made this video that it was not at all about mental health. It was literally just like a, a follow something on the screen sort of thing. And at the end, I like boop them with it. It's like a little flower and I boop them with it. And I got a ton of comments saying like, this made me feel like I was an innocent child again. I feel like the joy of being a kid. I feel like I'm being taken care of. And I was just like, wow. <laughs> and they were like, for just that minute that this TikTok was, they were like, for even just one minute, I felt at peace and like I was a kid again. And that just brought me so much joy to know that I helped someone feel that way. 
especially with something like that, where I wasn't even thinking about it because videos like that have helped me videos that have nothing to do with mental health. I'm like, I get to zone out for a second and feel okay. And I love being able to, to provide that for others as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so I think we're going to jump into actually that I I bearded audio brought this up just a few moments ago, but I I do really want to talk about that, you know, the creation process. I mean, do you find that creating ASMR also maybe is cathartic in a way? Um, maybe that you're making ASMR for yourself in a way when, when you create your channel, is that something that you think might be accurate to say? Oh my God. 100%. (laughs) Um, I actually started my channel just to get my nerves out, which is part of my, part of why my channel is just like fast and chaotic stuff. I was like, I'm just going to do whatever comes into my head, whatever feels like my anxiety needs to get out. I'm going to get out and we're going to make it ASMR and hopefully people like it. I don't know, but as long as I like it. Um, and I used to do that if I was too anxious, I'm like, I'm just going to make a video. Even if I don't post it, I'm going to go make a video. And it, was so relieving. Like by the end I was done making a 10 minute video, I'm like, oh, I can breathe. I can breathe again. So yeah, it's definitely personally been very, very helpful. For me as uh, somebody who also is like a songwriter, I, I equate them, uh, I think equally really. Um, it's kind of like if I have an idea for a video, um, it's hard for me to like focus on anything else creatively and uh, until I get that out of my system. Um, and so, like I said earlier, I I absolutely create, uh, to help with my own mental health. Um, and releasing a video into the wild is for me, feels exactly the same as releasing a new song into the wild. For me, it's kind of the same. Of course, I, I use it in a very therapeutic way for me too, but, Maybe the other way around, I tend to be so loud, so messy. And most people, when actually they hear me in real life, they are like, and you do ASMR? And I'm like, yes, it's the only time that I be calm, that I can. And I actually use it when I'm maybe in a really manic episode. I can actually like calm down, do some makeup, do ASMR with it and actually have a better day afterwards and it's the same if i not do it i'm not able maybe to function in other things so yeah it's it helps (laughs) um yeah i think for me the the biggest thing about creating has been the the connection like feeling that connection to those watching um because I, I do, I do think that if you have somebody to care about, um, it can help you pull through your own issues. I guess I've heard friends who are parents say similar. Like if you have to, you know, take care of something for your kids. I don't know. I'm not a parent, but you know, you can forget about your own issue for a while because it's it's bigger. So I feel like having that. Um, you know, someone out there and the people who I talk to and the people especially who I've gotten to know more closely, kind of knowing that I can impact them in that way. Like, even if I'm feeling very bad, um, but I kind of find this inner strength to to make something that will calm them. Um, and then sometimes, funnily, it will help me calm myself because, say, I'm trying to think of kind of affirmations or reason why it's going to be okay (laughs) then I can kind of remind myself that um yeah although sometimes I get stressed filming because (laughs) I find it hard like (laughs) I I, I'm a very um like I I often have to start again and I get frustrated but I think overall the big process of of creating um has been really rewarding and it's also I think a thing of being heard I because again it kind of I've done a lot of whisper rambles where I just talk about how I'm feeling or things I've been through and it was kind of a shock to me to hear you know people actually listen and they'll write a long comment saying oh when you said this and that and I'm like 
oh my gosh, you know, some of these people who have been supporting my channel for months and months, I feel like they know me better than some of my friends who maybe I lost contact with a long time ago. Or <laughs> there's there's something healing about also feeling heard and feeling that kind of dynamic thing. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll butt in here real quick too and just say, talking about kids, like I've got four of them. Uh, and it's very much like what you said, like if, if they're experiencing an issue, if they're angry, if they're sad, taking that moment to like sit down and talk with them, like you do totally like everything else you're doing doesn't matter. And what's funny is I do a lot of self-reflection too, where I'm like talking to my kids and I'm like, you know, let's get to the root of why you're sad or why you're angry. And, uh, afterwards I'm like, huh, I needed that for myself, you know, like, and, and I think doing that too, I don't have a ton of that style of video, but anytime I do do that, the whole time I'm talking, I'm like, this is just a pep talk. Like I'm, I'm just talking to myself and yeah. I think it is really interesting that dichotomy between awareness, you know, we bringing in the viewer, creating a relationship, but then also that sense of escapism as well, which I think is really interesting. Um, but I think something that's really important, we, we're trying to avoid, you know, giving medical advice of some sort here. I'm trying to focus on experiences, but um, just from your own experiences, what what's, some, what's a way that somebody out there, we have ASM artists, we have fans, what's a way that somebody could, could listen to you or hear you better um, when you're going through some of these stressful things? Just, you know, I think that might be useful. That's a tough one for me because I don't often, if I, my main form of communication with the ASMR community is Twitter. And if I tweet anything about like, today sucks, five minutes later, it's deleted. Cause I'm like, no one needs that, you know, on their timeline. Um, and so I find when I am in a dark place, I withdraw. And uh, that's where I think when I'm in those places, that's when I'm turning to like my wife and I'm turning uh, in my case, like I'll turn to Jesus. I'll turn to my kids. Um, and so that becomes much, much more personal for me. And, um, and so it's, I don't necessarily need anybody in the, in the community uh, to, to hear me, maybe just give me space, but I don't even like let people know I need that space really. So it's, it's kind of an awkward, like, we're all acquaintances, you know, like I'm not like super duper duper close friends with anybody in the community. Um, and but so it could yeah. be, it could be your friends or family though, too, because, yeah. you know, again, they, you know, that's just for anybody out there who maybe has, a, you know, just they themselves are dealing with this or people they know are, you know, everyone has a best friend or something who maybe is dealing with some stress and not everybody is always great. It's listening or be, you know, making people feel heard. Like Katie said, I mean, part of the essentials of ASMR is that you make your voice, you feel heard, like you said. Mm -hmm. So that was, yeah, it's okay if you want to touch on that too. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I guess it's mostly just give me space. I'll come back. I'll be okay. Um, and usually as somebody who's super extroverted, uh, being alone is great for me in those instances. Like I will go on a hike in the woods by myself and just stand, you know, in the trees and let the sun hit my face. And I'll just stand there for an hour and I'll come back and I'll be better. Um, yeah, I, I think, oh, wait, can you hear me? My screen like froze for a second. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I think a big thing for me is, um, a lot of the time, I feel, I don't know if I think it could be the same for a lot of people, but when I feel very bad or I'm going through something, like, mostly you don't want someone to try and fix your problem. <laughs> I think that's a kind of a common thing that gets talked about, that um, it can be frustrating when you, you want to open up and say how you feel, and then someone immediately comes in and say, what about this? What about this? And um sometimes you just need someone to just be there with you that's it just kind of hold space with you hear you and just let you be sometimes you need to be in in those feelings like you need to process things you need to feel things and just having someone who lets you know um 
that it's okay to be like that with them and that you know um they they don't make you feel guilty for that or they don't make you feel like it's making them feel weird or or you know and that can actually be um um a, a kind of such a special thing that it, it's it's more powerful than it, it seems and i've had that on videos where I, again i remember i remember slight sounds saying that in a video just kind of saying hey um i'm not here to fix what you're feeling i'm just here to to be with you and i things like that make me want to cry because i'm like <laughs> yeah um yeah <laughs> Yeah, I think um, going off of that point, um, something that what I do, I, I tend to turn to my wife and she and I will always do this thing where whenever we tell each other things that we're going through or anything, first of all, we ask, hey, are you, are you in a place to hear me out about this thing? It has to do with blah, blah, blah. So we kind of have an idea. And then what I would say, if someone's coming to you, uh, the thing that we do is we're like, okay, do you, what do you need? Or how can I best help you? That way you have something to go to when that instinct to fix comes in. You're just like, okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. What do you need? <laughs> that that would be the advice I would give to someone if they're looking to see how they can better help people. It would definitely be ask questions, stay curious, and remember that people need different things. And what might work for you might not work for someone else. So always ask. That's absolutely so. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Um, no, that I actually completely agree with Duna. For me, it's the same. Actually, when I'm in a really dark place, I tend to isolate myself. And I can sometimes not even create ASMR videos. And I also turn to my future wife. <laughs> um, because I, but there's also where for me, it's where ASMR is that important because if I isolate myself, th that doesn't mean that I don't need the bond or, or the connection, but maybe I, I cannot do that with the people that I have in my life in a sense, not because they will try to fix me because sometimes you just need someone that will speak and you don't have to interact with them. Just put a video and feel like you're interacting, but it's not, in real life, you don't feel the pressure of, at least for me, of socializing and explaining myself that sometimes I feel like everything too complicated for everyone to understand. So sometimes, and as, as also Katie said, sometimes you just have to be sad and, and be sad in that moment and that will actually heal you eventually. And if you just ignore it, it will be there under the rug and if you, you just pass through it, it, it will maybe help you. Absolutely. And I think that's so important to hear these messages because I think that, um, you know, ASMR has a unique place where that it is a place of non-judgment in a lot of ways, like Katie's been mentioning, and the rest of you mentioned as well. Um, it is that kind of a safe space. And I think that that really puts it in a unique spot. Um, that's really important. Um, and so let's actually touch on one more question and then I wanna just jump into these um, audience questions here. Um, and so that would be, do you, um, what types of ASMR do you fe feel are um, best for dealing with that is certain emotions? It could be any emotion, um, but it's maybe some of the things you're going through. What's, is there any certain styles that are better for you in that regards or is it just the ones that you particularly, you know, they tend to be the ones you like in general? For me, it will be actually whispered rumbles. Like, again, it's this feeling of hanging out, but not really hanging out. And the whispering and the, this sense of I'm with my friends and doing a sleepover. And that actually maybe takes you to a place where things were not so difficult and adulthood was not a thing in your head. So I think for me, for sure, will be whisper rumbles and people are speaking about their own experiences that make you feel again connected and not alone yeah uh f for me it's motivational ones um ones that are going to tell me it's going to be okay that, that build me up and uh 
I, what's funny for me is I have uh, a sister who's six years older than me and growing up, she uh, very clearly wanted to be a hairstylist, wanted to be a beautician. And so I got practiced on all the time. So like doing your makeup videos, I love those. Cause that's takes me back to when I was six or seven years old and my, my sister would do my makeup uh, and, and practice on me and uh, do my hair, uh, haircut. I love haircut videos. My wife's a hairstylist. And so uh, love that kind of stuff. And, and anything that kind of takes me back to childhood uh, is wonderful. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I like, for me, I, I always kind of got quite attached to one creator at a time. So <laughs> at the beginning I watched The Water Whispers and then I watched Karuna Satori for ages. Um, I still do. And then Grace V and it kind of gets to the point with me, it's actually not even so much about what the video is, but it's that I feel um, a kind of sense of genuineness from that creator. And I feel like they, um, allow themselves to be vulnerable. I, I think with the creators I've liked, um, they've talked a lot also about their own struggles. So it's kind of like when when they're doing, say, positive affirmations, it's not just blanket statements that kind of don't mean anything. It's actually from their experiences and things that have hit home for them. Um, and, you know, where it just comes out in a more natural style or I really like role plays. Um, where it feels like you're hanging out, like um, kind of a just cozy situations. But again, it has to be for me from one of my artists who I feel that connection to. Otherwise I feel a bit just um, cut off from it. So um, yeah. <laughs> for me, I think it's similar to that. I think there's two, there's two modes. If I'm going for like straight up cause I'm anxious or something, there's two modes. There's I need something super chaotic, nonsensical, turn my brain off kind of thing, uh, which I love, especially as a creator, because part of the reason that I started my channel was to just sort of do an imperfection practice where I'm just like, let's just see what happens. And I don't have to be perfect at this. And it was those creators that sort of inspired me to do that, where I'll, I'll like leave bloopers in my video and I'm just like, oh, we're going to do that again. All right, here we go. And that helps me with my perfectionism and that sort of anxiety. And then the opposite is like that best friend sort of vibe where I actually want to pay attention. I don't want to turn my brain off. I want to actively feel better. Uh, and that would be things like Grace V's videos where she talks about her own experiences or uh, Ocean's ASMR where she is like, okay, girl talk, like, let's just hang out. And oh, I love it so much. So those are like my two modes. Fantastic. All right, great. So we are running out of time here, but we're going to actually just ask these um, audience audience questions here. We just have a couple. Um, one of them I think is pretty important, actually. Um, so we'll start with that. Um, how do you balance supporting? And this is actually from, okay, this is a combination, in fact, of two questions, Swarms ASMR and Skane ASMR. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Essentially, the questions are, how do you balance supporting others with your ASMR and your own mental health? Um, Skane further asks, what preemptive actions do you take to help protect your mental health and insecurities? And so I think that's kind of a related question. Um, I would say my go-to thing that I remind myself is you can't pour from an empty cup. So you can't expect to support your community fully if you're like messed up, you know, like you got to take care of yourself first. And if that means, at least for myself, if that means like, hey, I got to post less videos this week or I got to take a pause, whatever it is, so that whatever's coming from me is good and healthy because I'm good and healthy. And that's what I would say in regards to how to support others via supporting yourself. And then preemptive actions, I think it's more of like cultivating a sense of self-trust that it doesn't really matter what's going on outside, like what people might say in regards to insecurities or mean comments. Um, and instead just cultivating a sense of like, okay, I'm not going to agree with those things, or I can trust that I've got my back. And then I know that those things aren't true or just sort of cultivating that sense of self-worth. And then it doesn't really, 
matter as much what goes outside of you because you've got you. For me, it's kind of the same. Um, I I will either pull away because I know if if I'm not in a good place, I for sure will not be able to help anyone. So if I need to take a break, I just take a break. I don't, I, thank God, this is something that I do because I enjoy it and I, I don't have to, to do this for sustaining my life and so on because I, it's not my job, but when I need to pull away, I pull away. And also when I'm, I know when I'm, I'm good that I can help others. And again, I do this proactive listening with my, with my followers or my subscribers or whatever. And, and actually have conversations with them, not just like reading through like, okay. And what happened? Well, maybe I will do this. I will do that. And again, uh, as preemptive actions, I will say that, Sometimes you just need to be aware that 20 minute video, or even if it's an hour or two, it doesn't define you. And what others perceive of you doesn't define you. And you just need to be aware. And this is something that I always say is like, you know your worth and nobody else know you the way like you do. So you need to listen to that voice that says, the person who wrote this had, doesn't know me. And also the, okay, I can be an empath and I can understand maybe why they're writing this down. When someone leaves a bad comment, it's it's not about you actually. It's something that maybe it's not sitting well with them. And I think that also for me, that helped me a lot through maybe hate comments or so. Okay, great. Did anyone want anything else to that? Oh, did yeah, you? I can, I can go. Yeah, I was, I was like the awkward, like, is Katie going to say yeah, anything? Yeah. I don't know. Um, <laughs> no problem. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to say, I, I, from the perspective of somebody who I consider myself like emotionally stupid, like as, as far as being in touch with my emotions. Um, and so, it, that Katie, you remind me a lot of my wife and that you seem to be emotionally intelligent, like seeing the community that you've built. You may, you may or may, you could disagree with that totally. Obviously, I don't know you, but from my perception, uh, it, it seems like you uh, just are more aware of your emotions. Uh, and so as far as being preemptive goes, like I'm working on it. Uh, I am somebody who is like, oh, I started being depressed two days ago. Like I, I do not pick up on it immediately. Um, and so generally I'll, I'll try. I'm the same way. Like I, if I'm not feeling it, I won't make a video. Like, cause if I'm not having a good time, it's just going to be trash. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I guess for anybody else out there who just does not feel in touch with their emotions, like I'm right there with you. Um, <laughs> Hmm. I, so this question, I'm like, it's a, it's a hard one, um, actually, <laughs> because I think boundaries are really important as an ASM artist, and I think I've I've been making videos now for like a year and a half, and I think boundaries I I'm bad at in general, but I was bad at with the channel at the beginning because I'd get like. I'd feel like I need to respond to every DM. Like somebody tells me all of their life trauma and I'm like, right, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna go like, that's not sustainable. Um, I think you have to give yourself this grace where you're like, um, yeah, you can do what, what you can on the kind of, like, like you should, you should understand that you're, you're mainly giving out what you can through your videos and any extra is whatever you want to do what you can handle because I think a lot of people out there they kind of they have this image of us because they only see us doing our calming thing and I think some people forget that we are a whole human <laughs> with, with our struggles um, behind that so sometimes people take it upon themselves and they think oh I'm just going to dm you and ask you know just come to you and offload everything and you just have to set boundaries with that and say okay I'm not going to 
I, I can't mentally look at any of those things for today or another day you might say, hey, I have the space to kind of like engage with one person and 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 let that be be meaningful. But you should know that you you can't fix anyone um, and you should never like be putting yourself in that position because that I don't know, that's kind of dangerous also on, on, on the other side. But you can you can just be a friend um, to, to those of your viewers who are being appropriate about it and respecting your kind of you know who you are um but i, I think it's, it's really hard like because um you mentioned about how you, you don't have to do this for your job and I, I think it's like a topic to to bring up for for those creators like some of my friends who i know who they this is their income and um the consistency thing i think can be really hard for people because um they know that their youtube is gonna do well if they post regularly and sometimes that um can be a lot of pressure and I, <laughs> I don't really know what to say <laughs> what people can do for that uh, but I have a lot of love and kind of empathy for that um but yeah I, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> actually I think yeah. mental health I mean just outside oh sorry go ahead did you interrupt oh you? I had a, a note sort of for that it's sort of related to that in a sense like if I've started to do this thing. It reminded me of the, the preemptive actions, I guess. Uh, I started to do this thing to sort of make up for the hate comments or things like that, or to make up for the stress of that. Um, so every time that I get a hate comment, I add something to my wish list. Or every time I get a hate comment, I'll put like a quarter in my piggy bank. Setting up a reward system makes it so when you get a hate comment, you're chilling. I win, you know, <laughs> like you end up winning that situation. So I think that can help with that. Um, I had a thought about the, the livelihood part of it, but I lost it. <laughs> I take blame for that one. I take blame. Um, but I was, I was just wanted to add to this because I think it's important that this is a problem. I think that, I mean, it's obviously a universal problem as being a human being, but just particularly with YouTube creators in general, I think like Katie said, with the daily grind, I think it can be really draining on a lot of creators. And I think that's an issue that's not necessarily discussed quite enough. I, there's a guy I follow, Roberto Blake, who talks a lot about that kind of stuff amongst other things, but with his YouTube coaching, he, he touches a lot on that. And I think that's important um, because it is stressful and being in the public eye can be very, you know, again, because creators are public figures, and, and it can be really hard. Um, and I think actually what I've decided to do, this is our last question here, I promise. Um, and I'm gonna just delete the audience question and I'm gonna ask another a question from another panel because actually it's my favorite question. And uh, I think it's a good chance for you. Um, Bearded Audio, you said you really like motivational stuff. So here's a chance for you to be uh, motivational for um, maybe some of the potential YouTube creators out there. Um, and this person just says, I'm a family man with an impossible dream. Um, so I'm wondering if I have a chance. Um, and I think we could, so we've done this for most of the other panels and one was for the cinematic. So, you know, this, uh, he doesn't have the equipment and stuff, but what about for a person who maybe is going through some, you know, some of these um, emotional uh, and mental health issues and, but they really want to have a, create a channel. They have a dream. Um, what might you say to those people? Uh, the biggest advice I can give is just start. Um, I started off with, uh, uh, video quality was trash. I had good, good audio quality just because that's like audio is kind of what I do for a living. But I mean, you don't have to have anything that is considered good. Um, ASMR is all over the place. I don't just listen to like super duper high quality ASM artists. Like I love lo-fi. Um, there's like this campaign against white noise. I don't care about white noise at all, but like, I also like will kill it for my videos. Right. Cause I'm just like, Oh, nobody wants that. And at the same time, I'm like, I don't pay attention to it at all. And if anything, I like it. And so it's, uh, yeah, the biggest advice I can give is, is just start. Uh, and once you have the, once you've uploaded your first video, it's, there's like this, like, Oh, I'm in it. Like I, I did it. Uh, and, and then it's just doing another one. Uh, and your, if you want to upgrade as you go, depending on the type of content you want to do, 
you can do that. Uh, that's what I've done over, and you know, I've been doing this for three years and uh, video quality has gotten a lot better. Um, and yeah, it's the biggest thing is just, just start. Yes, I, I want to like go straight from that because I literally thought about making an ASMR channel probably a year and a half before I actually did. And I have this whole like hard drive of my first ASMR video that I've literally got like 30 of them. And one day I want to make a compilation because it's so funny. Um, but, and I never uploaded them because I was like, no, that sucks. We'll start next week. But that happened, that went on for like a year. Um, and you know, the one I ended up eventually uploading was just called, I just titled it like taking one step at a time because that was telling myself. And it's like, you know, later I realized all those videos I made were fine. I was just like, we are our own worst critic. And I think it's something about just jumping over that. Um, because also I, I think like at the end of the day, like each of us has something unique to bring simply just because we are all unique. And it's really hard for us to see what's good about ourselves because all of us, most of us, we think harsh on ourselves, like I'm boring, I'm this, I'm that. But actually um, you have your kind of special thing but that someone watching will tune into and they'll connect to so I'd say like try and just just be yourself and go from your own experiences and what you love and the audience you'll find people who who vibe with you so um yeah yeah for me the best maybe advice I could give is just do not think that much about it just Again, as they say, just do it and don't think about, maybe don't like edit it fast, take the, the things that you actually think they are really, really bad out and just upload it. And I'm sure as, as Kathy said, that there's 7 billion people out there that someone will connect with you. Maybe it's one, maybe it's two, maybe it's 7,000, a million. And it doesn't matter. You, you impacted at least one person who, who watched you and, and connected with you and Um, for me, it's it's been the same rewarding feeling from when it was like two viewers, when it's 10K. It doesn't matter. It's the connection that, that matters. And again, just be yourself. And th the things that you think when you are watching the video that it's an imperfection, it's maybe what it will cause this ASMR trigger in someone or the, the unexpected. So... Don't be so harsh and chill about it. Yeah, definitely going off of that, sometimes the bloopers in a video are what give me ASMR. And uh, a lot of the creators I watch, you can tell they don't even have a tripod. Like they're putting their phone on a stack of books or something. And I love it so much. And I love the white noise. I, sometimes you can hear the cars in the street and I'm like, let's go. Like I'm going to sleep to this. And I love it. So I think if you're hesitating because you don't have the right equipment or it's never quiet at my house or whatever it is, try that. What if that's your thing? You know, what if like, people are going to like it? There is somebody out there who's going to love that stuff and you're going to find your little corner of the internet. Oh, oh go ahead, one, Katie. Yeah, I mean, please. Yeah. <laughs> no, it just made me think as well. Like, if you're starting a channel, just please, just, just don't look at your views. Like, I found something that helped me is just I try to picture one person behind the screen when I'm recording so that I don't freak out. And because otherwise, if you just imagine this wide world watching you, you can kind of get too self conscious. But if you just imagine you're actually talking, To, to one person and then the same with like focusing on your comments like you might just get one comment and instead of sitting there being like oh no I only have three views like just look at that one comment and be like and give them a really nice reply and and that builds up you know um so yeah but also Sorry. I think that go ahead yeah go ahead oh, don't tell me <laughs> just to... oh you no, go no, first. please you go first you go first <laughs> hey. um It's and uh, there's this phrase that I think it's going around everywhere that is like if 20 people watch my video, it's like ah, 20 people. But if 20 people would walk right now to my house to to see what I'm doing, 20 people, I will freak out. So always remember that 20 people is a lot <laughs> of people. So 
numbers don't actually matter that much. Yeah. And, um, oh God, that was really good. I just started thinking about like the 20 people thing. <laughs> um, something that I tried to tell myself whenever I'm like, oh God, like there are going to be people that don't like it or people that don't understand. I say this phrase all the time. I go, then it's not for them. And when I get comments from people being like, this was too fast. This is too chaotic. This was too loud. I'm just like, then it's not for you. Your content is going to be for the people who like it. And those are your people. So I just tell myself it's not for them. And then sometimes I'll just have moments where uh, like if I'm panicking about publishing something, I just, I literally tell myself, like I do like a whisper yell to myself and I'm like, I deserve to be celebrated. And that's what I tell myself when I'm scared to upload and I upload it, or if I'm scared to promote my channel or something, I just say, I deserve to be celebrated. If someone's not going to like it, it's not for them. Absolutely. Well, that was really, really fantastic. And I'm so appreciative that you spent time with us today. Um, I want to thank everyone in our panel today. Um, we have Katie ASMR, Island Lucia ASMR, Luna Bloom, and Bearded Audio ASMR. Thank you all so much for joining us for TingleCon 2021. I think the audience is going to love hearing this panel. There's just so many different facets and, you know, there's just so much more to add to this, um, but unfortunately we're limited for time today. So that all said, thank you very much and have yourselves a good one.